Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and this is part two of my oxygen sensor video. Uh, I've got another video coming out in tandem with this. I don't know if this one will be first or the other one will be first. That one focuses on where we install the oxygen sensor. I had to fix my location, clean up some welds, etc, etc. This one is going to go into doing an open air calibration on the AEM wideband sensor. This uses the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor and is supposedly does not require a wide band or an open air uh, calibration on it. The older ones you used to have to do this a lot uh, because they would drift. Supposedly these uh, have a what is called a trim sensor in them and during startup it reads that sensor and if it sees that that is off from what's calibrated into the gauge it makes adjustments accordingly and that is supposed to keep this thing a lot more accurate over time and I've had this one installed for over three years now. So uh, I think that it's still reading pretty good. I think some of the other issues that I've been having recently have to do with uh, the not the necessarily the bung that I was running the wideband in, but the one that I welded on, I moved my factory narrow band to, and I think that one was letting a little bit of air creep in because my, my uh, AFRs were changing as things would get heated up in the exhaust. So I would run lean until I would really get on it, heat the exhaust up, and that would seemingly seal off a pinhole leak around the narrow band. So I fixed that. I added a secondary bung where I'm actually going to be installing this that's in a, in a little better location than the old one that you had to take the exhaust manifold out to get to, whereas the old one was installed kind of on the fly while it was on install. But as I said, while that is all cooling off before it goes back into the truck, let's go ahead, hook this thing back up, make sure it's not touching anything because this thing gets hot, it will still go through a heat cycle, and then let us go and walk through the steps on the gauge to do an open air calibration and hopefully we won't need the uh, user manual to, to figure this out. But if we do, it's not the end of the world. So let's jump into the truck and hopefully I figure out a way to set the camera up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, hopefully you guys can see everything all right. Uh, we've got the sensor warmed up and on. Now if we go in through the modes here, we're looking for the calibration. There's the air cal and we're gonna confirm it. Free air, it's going through the steps here. That's it. I mean, that's about as easy as it gets. You just have to remember that whenever you do this, uh, you've got to have the sensor out of the exhaust pipe because if the sensor is still in the exhaust pipe, it will uh, pick up some trace residual uh, you know, fumes or something like that, that will throw the calibration off. So just keep that in mind. Okay, simple enough. The million dollar question is, is when do you need to do something like that? Uh, well, honestly, you probably shouldn't. If you're running the LS 4.9 model, uh, LSU 4.9 model, uh, wideband O2 sensor, that thing, you really should never have to do this. But if for some reason you are noticing over time, you've been on the same tune, for forever and then just out of the blue it starts drifting one way or the other it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead pull it out run it through that process make sure that it passes and then reinstall it then and see how it reads uh, if you have the older model which I can't remember is like an LSU 4.1 uh, you have to do that so many thousand miles those things are really not designed to be left in full time on your car they're designed only for tuning then to be taken out uh, so they haven't really been in circulation for years. You know, the 4.9 has been the latest and greatest, and there might even be a model coming out here soon that's uh, just as good, if not better than the 4.9, but the 4.9, it's faster, it's more accurate, you can run it uh, full time. And as I said, I've put at least 10,000 miles on my setup without any issue, and uh, I'll be 100% honest with you, I don't think that the issue that I was having had anything to do with the oxygen sensor itself, as I said, so much as the mounting. So make sure and check the description below for the other video that goes into the mounting process, some of the tri tips and tricks that you need to know about that. Uh, also, make sure and check out the link below to get to my tuning playlist where you can learn how to tune with HP tuners. Uh, there's a lot of great information out there and I appreciate everybody's feedback. I want to thank all of the new subscribers and all the new patrons. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button down in, there in the corner. And uh, as always, if you have any comments, please feel free to put them down below. If you have any questions, make sure and ask them. Uh, there are no stupid questions. The more information we can get out there, the better it is for everybody you know that's kind of involved. Keep those questions coming. You guys are great. You have the best questions and you have the best suggestions. So make sure and if you have a suggestion of a video that you would like to see, 
and it's not already in the playlist somewhere, or if there is one in the playlist that you would like me to go more in depth on, by all means, throw that down in the comments below. Throw a thumbs up if you found this useful. Throw a thumbs down if you didn't, but tell me what you didn't find useful or what you didn't like about the video. And as always, thank you for stopping by the garage.